Hello and welcome to episode 261 of Life Song Radio. My name is Blake Shankel. I'm Phil Ramsey. And I'm Mike Wells. Hello, gentlemen. Good to be here, my friend. Man, it is good to have you guys here this week. We're missing one. Yeah. We're just the three amigos today. <laughs> that uh, I hope he didn't get the flu. I, it, look, the flu has been going around yeah. like crazy and knocking them down like flies. I really, he probably got that that virus. Well, I don't know. From China. I, that, that coronavirus. <laughs> the, the beer virus is what yeah, The beer virus. That's what the kids are calling it at school. I, are they? Yeah. Well, you, you are in the know, huh? You know, you, well, I ask them where they get their news from. They said, well, if it pops up in a meme, it must be real real news and i said if you're getting your news from memes (laughs) it's wrong (laughs) what a we have got a messed up society but i i am worn out gentlemen honestly this past uh weekend as we you know had the super bowl did a little party at both of our churches got together and uh played some games and just showed how old i'm getting and (laughs) blake's over here ripping his shirt off and (laughs) switching in between games into sleeveless shirts and showing his guns off and (laughs) And Phil comes in and owns after, us in volleyball. After the game, by the way. I was a smart yeah. one. <laughs> they were going to shoot hoops at uh, at 3 o'clock. I show up at 4.30 when the game's over. He yeah. did. He played volleyball, the least of. Yeah. And guess what? I'm more out. You're I'm so From doing this right here. Well, I, I was talking to my daughter. I said, I don't hurt so much here, pointing to, you know, my ear. Yeah. <laughs> but here yeah. and i meant my whole body <laughs> well you get a certain age i'm i'm a little older than y'all black how old are you 36 just, how old are you you're just a little older than me yeah <laughs> 28 i could be your granddad i'm 28 <laughs> <laughs> but i think around 38 40 you start really that's really one thing start it starts going again. south yeah, well, I already feel that way, and I'm only 28. <laughs> if you hurt yourself at 40, like if you hurt your hip I or went, something, you just don't ever recover. I went to the doctor about my knee, <laughs> and he gave me that cortisone shot the last time I went. He said, well, let me ask you, you, you know, do you stretch before you get in the car? No. Do you stretch before you drive? I said, what? Doc, I'm, this was a couple years ago. I said, man, I'm only 26. Mm-hmm. I got to stretch before mm-hmm. I drive my vehicle? <laughs> good. Said, well, it, it, it sure would help. But, um, well, I, I felt pretty good, though, man. I was hanging with them young kids, Mike. You we were, yeah, I you mean, fouled a lot. Uh, well, <laughs> look, you know, hey. I, no no refs, and so well, Beaver calls the rules. We were on their well, home court. I'm 20 years older th- than they are. And I, there's got to be some advantage, by the way. <laughs> Yeah. But no, we had a good time. It we was did. great, and yeah, Jimmy was there with us. But then he was I, coaching. The next day he, <laughs> yeah, he was looking upon. Um, but uh, but evidently he fell sick. So that's why Jimmy's here, he, not here. He didn't feel like his voice was going to hold up, and so uh, we're 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 gonna we're gonna tackle it ourselves. Yep. But uh, man, what a great episode last week, guys. Um, we we really we really have pe- reached a peak upon the Roman Mountain. I wouldn't, you know close to the pinnacle and uh it was a really good bible lesson really good word study mm-hmm. i thought and and you know staying true to the word and going through scriptures and understanding these words that are in the bible of predestination and foreknowledge and you know it's going to continue today as well as we continue more word studies and as can continue to you know we, we've come to a screeching halt basically upon this this scripture <clears throat> but it's so big it's so monumental it wraps up salvation with just yeah. within two verses here and so we really need to just camp out here and, and as paul as, we, as we're driving up to the top we need to stop pull over look at the scenery and and really gaze upon it yeah we did the key to understanding interpreting scripture first you need definitions and so that's i encourage you to go back uh and listen to last week's episode as we we looked at what the definitions were we also uh, uh looked at as far as what we're studying we looked at what it was not and of course we use scripture to show what these words meant so i would encourage you to go back and listen to episode what was last week's episode 260 260 and i just it was really it'd be really helpful we can't we'll review a little bit today but we will not be able to go back in depth and discuss really what for no means right and uh predestination we'll talk a little bit about it but to really get the full scope of it you need to go back next week and check that out yeah and uh, you know 
this is really going to be a part two of of that, if you will. This we're going. I know we're continuing on, but we're going to. We didn't even really finish verse twenty nine of last week. Um, there's some additional things that we want to discuss this morning, and um, or at, at whatever time you're listening, and then we're going to continue on with thirty as well. And we may probably have to come back and visit it again next week, and then uh, just because of the monumentalness of this scripture. But um, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to it, and certainly glad to be able to study next to you guys. And I hope our listeners are, are getting something from this uh, um we're we're it's it's out there uh on video we, mm-hmm. we're, we're putting it out there on youtube that's out there on, uh, upon our facebook page if you just go to life song radio on our facebook page uh lifesongradio.com our website we've got video studies we've also been putting up blogs this yeah. past few weeks and so jimmy did uh, an overhaul of the website done a real good job yeah i think it looks pretty good yeah. pretty clean we also have a new logo uh, those that are watching by video they can see it upon our screen on the back side mike and his wife elena worked really hard on that logo so we've got a clean cleaner look a little bit uh, refined look upon the logo and you know things change sometimes but if you go to our website as well and you go to our our facebook page you can see that logo and and just some of the the, the cleanliness that we're doing there but we're posting blogs just some things just some two three minute reads there and so you'll see some some things from us and phil he posts a lot upon facebook as far as just some scripture just some real just just um quick little bible studies there if you will yeah, and I see, you've added some visual visual things. So we came in and uh, Blakeston hung a few posters. So we'll talk about this one here in a minute. But what, what do you got going on here? Well, so what I was thinking as I was sitting out here in my shop, just enjoying him for not being a radio station, I was mm-hmm. uh, looking at it and I was thinking, if anybody looked upon our podcast, they would not know what we were, you know, because our our, radio, our, our logo didn't have a... What do they think we were doing? Duck hunting? <laughs> uh, we would look like a hunting show, by the way. So I had some pictures. And what I do is, is that this, this, this resource called Visual Theology that I use. And what it is, is, is we're, we're a visual mindset kind yeah. of people. You know, and so what it does is it takes theological things in the Bible. It just takes biblical truths in the Bible, and it puts it the, the Tim Challies, and I can't, I, I'm not going to do it right. I can't remember the author that really put it all together. But anyway, it puts things visually, and so they, I have a subscription to it, and I have posters, and and um, uh, that's what we have back here. If if you go on our YouTube and watch this on YouTube, you'll see right behind Mike is the Trinity, and it it really says what the Trinity's not, but it also says what the Trinity is. It's just a beautiful picture of what the Trinity is. We use it for explanation. When we go sharing the gospel, we'll bring it out there. And it, it, it causes, it's just a, a, a topic, yeah. something to bring up that we can discuss. And then, yeah, we'll discuss the one here yeah, behind I see Phil. that. You want to, uh, I've got that on the computer. Maybe we can put that up on the screen because this is actually has a lot to do with what we're talking about. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. They can't see it, but there it is. Because we talked about this actually, the scripture that we're studying, is actually, it's salvation. Yeah. From yeah. from eternity, what? To eternity. Eternity to eternity. That's it. Yeah, it, and what we call it, and it's a Latin phrase, and... It's called the Ordo Solution. Solution. Ordo solution. Yeah, that's what <laughs> it, it is. A solution. I mean, it is a solution, by the way. It's the Ordo Salutis, is what it is. It's a Latin term for the order of salvation. And so, what this poster does, it really just kind of shows. It tries to put in visual format the the uh, the order or the sequence of conceptual steps that are involved in the salvation process. Yeah. And and so, it really helps us to be able to see what comes first. And and that's ultimately what we're discussing here. This these past last week and. This week is the order of salvation, and and it uh, the sequence which is is logical in the chronology to how we're saved, and it starts with the election, you know, the foreknowledge of God, yeah. and then the election, and then it moves to the atonement of Christ, and then next thing we have the calling, which we're going to discuss a little bit about today, right. what type of calling we're talking about, and then after you're called, you're just you're regenerated, you're justified, and you're adopted, and you're converted. Kind of all wrapped up there at once, so it's it's not necessarily all linear, if you will. There's some things that happen at the same time, and then once we see that, then there's sanctification. There's the perseverance of those saints, and then finally we have glorification, and which we see all here in this scripture today. So this this is a visual, and and I think for those that are watching. Um, uh, on our, our our YouTube page, you'll be able to see the the order salutus here, and I and I 
I uh, ask that you go and check that out. Just Google Order Salutis and you'll find that. And and so, but anyway, that's what we're going to talk about today is is the Order of Salvation. Really going to be focusing upon, um, we're going to finish up our predestination talk of, of what we were predestined for. And, and yeah. so we're going to look at the scripture and then also going to move into 30. And we're going to look at the word, probably going to focus upon the word, this this calling and and, and what is this calling? calling mean and 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 how do we define that so you know before we get started uh let's uh let's pray and then mike if you'll read our scripture today i think you know through 30 and then we'll get going how about that sounds good father god we are so thankful today for your word we're so thankful for the ordo salutis or the uh the order of salvation how you have uh foreordained you have the foreknowledge you have predestined things to happen father you have foreordained us to be saved and father we trust in that there's eternal security wrapped up in that and we thank you for these words uh, such as predestination and foreknowledge and calling and sanctification and glorification and we thank you for the bible that so we can uh just to be able to understand it and mighty men that have gone before us to help us to be able to put these things in our own words and we're so thankful for that so thankful for this bible study as well may you yes lord Open our eyes to um, what you have us to learn today, to your word, so that we can step into the mind of God a little bit, if you will, and uh, be sanctified. For those that are listening today that don't know you, we pray for salvation for them, Lord, that they cry out in repentance and faith. Lord, it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, fellas, let's uh, dive on into this. Romans 8, uh, verses 29 through 30, it says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Amen. Amen. Uh, so last week we we did touch base on on what it means to be foreknown or or foreknowledge in itself, and I think uh, we're going to start off looking at this word uh, predestination just to kind of touch base. We barely dipped our toes in that in the last episode, um, and on, and like we did with the last one, word studies are important, especially when we're looking at um, these particular doctrines and. Uh, predestination is one that uh, tends to scare people off that word in itself and and a lot of people like to shy away from it but but predestination it's a biblical doctrine and because it's a biblical doctrine that's why we are going we we've spent so much time last week on foreknowledge and then this week we're going to dive more into predestination because we see predestination is throughout the scriptures it's in the bible so we can't ignore it Uh, when we look at things like you know israel was chosen out of all the nations, right? Abraham was chosen out of your the Chaldeans. And then you have Jesus who taught predestination in the New Testament. Multiple different scripture references we can look at. Um, the apostles taught predestination, as we see here, Paul in his letter. Um, so since it's biblical doctrine, we got to talk about it, right? So let's, let's, let's dive into that and see if we can break this thing down. Well, if you are a Christian, you believe it. That's you good. really do yep. because it's in the Bible. Now, some some people disagree on what all that entails. That's why we just got to go back to the Scripture and and uh, see what it says. The, the Greek word, I believe, is pro orizo. Is that the yep. correct? Yep. It's uh, a compound word. Yeah, it means to uh, to. You said you had you gave a good definition that uh, last week about the horizon. Yeah. Basically, what's that? Mean? Yeah, it simply means that the destination is determined yeah. before the journey begins. Is what it means. The pro horizo, right? Horizon there, and then it's and pro means before. So the horizon, the journey has been um, has been set out. It's been. Uh, Taken care of by God, basically, if you will, He is He has predetermined that the journey, the 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 ending, all that has been predetermined by God, and that's what predestination means in a nutshell. So, what God has done, He's marked out on the horizon the salvation of those whom He has foreknown. That's what we're we're talking about here the the salvation of those who God foreknew, and we talked about foreknowledge in the past. It's not just a a knowing of something. It's not this intellectual if you will, because of course God knows everything. But what he means for no is, is this loving, saving, 
personal relationship with someone, and he's marked that out from the beginning. Right. And so we're going to get into what we've been predestined to, but you keep saying we've been predestined to salvation. And when we looked at this chart here just a minute ago, uh, you had mentioned the elect. Is that what we're talking about, the elect? Yeah, we are. We are talking the, the elect. Okay. You can use the elect as well. So that's that brings me up. A good question that I think many people would ask in this particular topic is uh, one of the most common objections when we look at this doctrine of predestination is, is it, it seems unfair, right? So, Phil, how would you respond? So, you, so you're talking to somebody <laughs> about, which should I ask Blake this question? <laughs> no, I'll bring it on. All right, Phil. So, so you're talking to somebody. We're talking about predestination, those who are elect. We know God has foreknown. We touched based on that last week. Yeah. So what we've been predestined to, Blake says we've been predestined to salvation. Um, that seems unfair. That seems unfair, Phil. Well, we really, didn't, we really don't want fair. We really don't want God to be fair. Because if he if if he's fair, we are we are we are killed the second we're born. So we don't want God to be fair. We don't want that. It's a. Do we not want God to be fair or just or? Well, this, this word elect it means. Of course, that's not in you know. Election is a part of it. You don't see that word here. The word simply means to choose. God sure. chooses a lot of things. God chose Israel, the nation. That's right. And all the Jews in the nation are not saved, but he chose the nation. He chose Judas, okay? One of the 12. He is one of the chosen apostles and disciples. That's Guess right. what? Judas is riding in hell right now. Yeah. So it just simply means to choose. And So if we say that God chose beforehand from the beginning of time, how is that fair? I know you say that it's un. It, it, we don't want what's fair because what would we get if we, if it was all fair? We would we would get what we deserve if it was fair. We want what we don't deserve, and I understand. And I wrestled with that for I don't know two years. And I know you mentioned on the last program that you did wrestle with that. Yeah. And and was this one of those? things that maybe went through your head that it didn't seem like it was a well what we do is we 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 have to remember who we are we have to remember that we're, we're mere humans with finite brains That's and right. we're trying to step off into god's mind and what god does and what we can't do is we can't reconcile some things that that god obviously has done and his scripture says that and the danger is is when we can't reconcile that that before the world ever began, God wrote some names down in the Lamb's book of life, and at the same time the Lamb was slain. We can't reconcile what he did before Phil ever showed up on the scene. The danger is when you can't reconcile it, you you say, well, that's not what he meant. That That can't because we know that God is love. Yeah. And if God's love, then God's not going to do certain things. And but can, but he's, can I answer? But he's also that, just. <clears throat> let me let me answer that just real quick. And and just pulling off that point, Paul brings the same argument up in Romans nine. Yeah. That he he jumps he jumps it and he says he he goes in and he he actually knows what they're going to say the exact same thing. Right. That's not fair. But just as God told Job in Job, this is what he tells Paul mm -hmm. in Romans 9. He says, but who are you, O man, to answer back to God? Will what is molded say to its molder? Why have you made me like this? Has the potter no right over the clay to make out the same lump, one vessel for honorable use and also another for dishonorable use? Paul answers there, it's God's will how he wills it. Hmm. The What's fairness is, is that he hates us all. Like Phil says, what's fair is that we all go to hell. What's unfair is that God has pulled us, is that we don't get what 
we yeah. rightly deserve. Yeah. That's grace. And we say, well, why God this? Why didn't you choose these people for salvation? Why not this? He says, who are you, old man, to tell me what I'm to do? Is what he's saying here, right? And he says, God does as he pleases. That's good. And so that's where we have to lie. And, does it? Yeah, and we default to the mode that, that everybody wants God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But until the Holy Spirit does a work in your heart, uh, you don't want God. I mean, we just we just default, you know. We we paint this picture like you have people sitting around saying, "Look, I want to be saved." Well, if you want to be saved, you can be saved. Call out on the name of God; He'll never reject you. That's not the case, though. From birth, we've already went through Romans. We know what we do when we're outside of Christ is uh, we don't understand, we don't seek, we've all turned away. That's what we do. We have, and we talked a little bit about, you know, we free will, and we do have free will. We can freely do whatever sin we want to do. That's what free, as as free will, you can do whatever sin you want to do. Absolutely. Free will. Well, yeah, yeah. You've given free will, but your free will will always take you to yeah. your free will without God intervening will always take yeah. you to hell. By the way, it's always going to take you by the by, to hell. It's God's will. When he wills in your life to be saved, and we're going to get into that today, is, is that you'll be saved. Another question, I'll, I'll, I'll ask this question too, because I hear, the, I hear these two questions right here as okay. well. Well, if God's predestined some to heaven, has he not predestined some to hell? Well, I would say the Bible doesn't say that, though. No. I've never read that. I hadn't read, read that either. However... If we didact that, and we just if we say, okay, well, if, if this is the conclusion that we come to, right, that God is, you know, He's predestined some them to heaven, that means He's not predestined those to hell. I would say they were already going to hell. Yeah, I, I, we don't see in Scripture where He has predestined them to hell, but like we've just gotten done saying, I think just to summarize y'all's point, God would be perfectly just in allowing all of us to spend eternity in hell but out of his grace and mercy and his love that you just talked about he has chosen his people out of those to be saved elected and predestined to salvation do you agree I, 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 and gra- I, grace is a gift look here mercy is a look if a if somebody broke into my house right and I pulled a gun up. He don't determine whether I shoot him or not. Yeah. I determine if he's going to get mercy. He don't tell me what I'm going to give him. That's right. And so what God does is he he is the one what that gives grace. He is the one that gives mercy. You know, we don't determine. We can't tell God what he can and can't do, right? It comes from him. Yeah, think think through these two think two truths here. Really quickly. And this is basically what we've said here is is election to everlasting life is unconditional. Correct? It's unconditional. It's not based on anything that we can do to everlasting life. But election to eternal punishment is conditional. God has endured. This is what Romans says in 922. This is what Paul says in Romans 922. He's endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. He must be patient with them, right? Because they are rebelling against him. According to the Bible, God doesn't send anyone to hell because that person is non-elect. He doesn't. That's not what the Bible says. He sends them to hell because they're sinners who willing to rebel against them. That's why they go to hell. Yeah. That's that's why people go to hell is because they're sinners because they've sinned against a holy God. And so, it, the the second truth is this: every human deserves God's wrath, and God would be just to send all humans to hell. That's the that's that's what we have to grasp. Okay. Is it wrong for God to send rebellious sinners to hell? Then why? It, no, that's that's no. It's not wrong. Then why would it be wrong for Him to plan to do so? So why do you think so many people struggle with that? Struggle with accepting that that particular <clears throat> doctrine, this doctrine of predestination. I mean, because we see it in Scripture. I mean, we can sit here and look at multiple different verses where we see predestination uh, laid out there for the believer. And you said, as a Christian, you you've got to believe in this doctrine. So why do so many struggle and and reject this idea of predestination? I'll tell you one reason why I think they do. Two reasons. First of all, because they don't want their loved ones to go to hell. Okay. 
I mean, you don't. Okay, you you sit here and you wrestle. It's like, is is this one elect? Is this one elect? Is this one elect? But what that does, it should put us a burning desire to share the gospel with everybody and anybody. Amen. If you don't think you're, if you want your kid, if you don't want your kid to go to share the gospel with them. Have you ever shared the gospel with them? Your parents, I don't know if they're elect or not. Share the gospel with them, because what God. And well, and another point, people say, well. This this thing of predestination it takes away the 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 evangelism, it takes away evangelism from it. It absolutely does not. Because what did Paul say when he went into Acts? God said he says, "Hey, you're not going to be persecuted. Why? Because I have some that are here in this town. I have there are some of my people basically in this town that that need to be evangelized. Do that we is, know according to Scripture." How are people saved? Yeah, well, by, they must hear by hearing the word of God. The word of God, and, and and that's why we need missionaries. That's why we need people spreading the gospel truths all over this world. Because there are there are elect. Let's use the words. There are elect people throughout all times, throughout all worlds, throughout all nations, peoples, tribes, and tongues that need to hear the word. And when they hear the word, when they hear this calling, which we're going to get into, and then when God affectionately calls them. There's nothing they can do to stay away from being saved. Right. And I'm not sure exactly who said this, and and but but I know I remember reading this. Is we do not know who the elect are, right? So there's not we do not have elect stamped across the forehead of everybody that God has elected, right? So we have a responsibility, yeah, and that is to go share the gospel. That's it, and and you know that that's this gives us the ultimate goal to do it because you know what. You know, we say, well, we have to put it upon ourselves. We have to put it on ourselves. No, we don't. We just share the gospel. And God says, I'll handle I'll handle the salvation portion of That's it, right. right? And so, man, this gives me the ultimate zeal to go and share the gospel with whoever, man, because I know that if it lands upon the right person who God has foreordained in the, before time, if that gospel message lands before them, then, man, they'll be saved. God and will regenerate and, their heart. And there are people out there like that. But I don't know. All I know is, is the command is given to me to go share the gospel. All right. Are you ready for this one? Ready. If you go to hell, it's not because God didn't choose you. It's because you rejected Christ. Yeah. You're going to be held responsible for not believing. You're going to be held responsible for rejecting the offer of salvation. You're not going to hell because he didn't choose you. You're going to hell because you were a sinner and you rejected what you knew about God. Okay. Now that, look here. I say your human brain there, right? Yep. That makes no sense at all. I was just about to ask the question. <laughs> okay, so if, I, if, I, if it's me rejecting God, all right, and because of my sin, how do we say that it's fair when we look at a situation like Jacob and Esau? Okay, because before they were even born, right? So we see God has chosen Jacob, or yeah, Jacob, Jacob I love, I love. Esau. Yeah, I hate yeah. it. Okay, I'm trying to get that straight. <laughs> All right. So, what about Esau, who had who had done no wrong yet? How do you find fault with him, Phil? You said he done no wrong yet. You don't have to do. You don't have to do wrong to be wrong. He was born in Adam. Yeah, he's born. So it's not about your work. You're, we're all born sinners. We, like I said, we've covered all this. Now, are we sinners from the womb? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's Absolutely. what the Bible because teaches. Because we're born in Adam. Boom. Yeah. I, just, I mean, I knew I was going to ask you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it, 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 yeah. it's hard to yeah. wrap your brain yeah. around. And when, when you can't wrap your brain around that, here's what you, here's the day. Do not create a God that you can under, and then we'll get to Romans 11. He's going he's gonna to just lay it out. But do not create a God that you can understand everything he says. If you can do that, then he's yeah. not He's not worth worshiping. Yeah. Yeah, I love what yeah, Paul that's did, good. just like you just brought up. I mean, I love that Paul, all this stuff we're talking about, Romans 8, right? We're going to finish up this chapter before long. We'll be jumping into chapter 9. And and Paul is answering these questions that he knew that people would be bringing up yeah. because it just makes, like from a logical standpoint, we understand how this can be a confusing doctrine. And he, he goes on to answer yeah. those. But just like you brought up, you know, who are we to? question God I mean I always look back at Job you know Job's you know has his conversation with the Lord and, and the Lord opens up and he he says who is this that darkens my counsel by words without knowledge <laughs> and then dress for action like a man I'm going to question you and you're going to make it known to me you know it's like God 
with Job. Boy, if you're going to question me, you better be ready to <laughs> recognize big board who you're talking on. to. You know, who, where were you when I laid the foundations of the yeah. world? So I, I always look back to that. I know. I, and, and that puts into perspective, as it did for Job, who we are before the almighty, sovereign, all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present. I mean, self-determining God. This is who we are standing before. And what does Job say at the end? He says, I'm going to shut my mouth, Lord. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. And yeah. there's times with knowledge, certain things in the scriptures. Listen, we just got to shut our mouth and just know that, look, God, God is God right. Is. He will always do right. And we have to trust that. He will. And 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 that's why we that's why we read the Bible, line by line, verse by verse, in context. We see these things. We see these truths. We see who God is. But again, we're not going to understand everything about God. We don't understand His ways because His ways are definitely not our ways. Sure. You know, if hey, if it was me writing the Bible, it'd be a totally different Bible, right? But yeah. it's not. He's an infinite God, and we're a finite being, and we can't understand the infinite God's mind. That's okay. Right. And so that's where we're at today. And so, so this just that's that's great questions that have been brought up probably by some of our listeners and stuff as well. Hey, some of the same questions I had years ago as well. But as I more I studied studied the Bible, the more I read about it the more i just understood what scripture was in context and i was a, a student of the bible i understand man man this thing's way bigger than i am man yes. and, and the bible and here's the thing come to it if the bible says it and i'm i'm, yeah, I'm it's, good with yeah. it uh, personal pronouns they're big yeah so we're you've taught me that by the way May I taught you, you something? You did. You taught me something, Phil. Dang, hey, I know. Are we recording this? <laughs> y'all, have, y'all haven't taught me that yet. I'm hoping <laughs> okay, to gain well, something from Phil well, right now. Well, just look here. He'll text message you a hundred times. <laughs> look here. This isn't referencing a plan. Okay. This is referencing really? people for those whom. These are these are people. These are personal pro- pronouns. For those whom he foreknew. You said it earlier. Salvation begins before the before time was ever created. We know again, names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We know that has already was written before creation. And not just taking into consideration of the creation of time. I mean God's outside of time. He's outside so of everything time. that he is doing is outside yeah. of time. Yep. So for for those whom he foreknew, listen last week and you'll get the all the tons and tons of scripture. Uh, this isn't mere foresight. This is relationship when when uh, Adam knew Eve, they had a kid. New. Gnosko. This is relationship. He also, and just also notice that as we start with this salvation of knowing, it keeps going until glorification. So these, this person here that God knew before the world ever began and you were ever born, this person was predestined. To what? To be conformed in the image of Jesus Christ. That's what was predestined in this scripture. He has made a decision that's already settled. The destin- destination is already settled. That he's going to make Phil Ramsey look like Jesus Christ. He got a lot of work to do, and he can do it. Sure does. Well, anyway. <laughs> So that's what's been predestined here. We, we talked about a little bit in Ephesians last week. Adoption was predetermined. Here, what was predetermined was that, that he's going to conform me to look like Jesus Christ. Yeah. And why does he do that? He does it. Why? Let's just keep reading. In order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Yes, exactly. And so let's let's look at this for just a second before you get into that firstborn, because that's a big scripture yeah. as well. But look here, this is the we got, we talking about the five links of the chain of salvation, God's golden chain of salvation, if you will. The five links here. And this is the only link out of the five links that He gives the explanation. Remember, anytime we come to four, that's a term of explanation. So what follows uh, is is the explanation of what He's been talking about. Well, He is talking about just like Phil said. Why are we predestined? What what are we 
predestined for, and that is to become the image of him. And so one, what we see here is, is really there's there's two explanations. It's a twofold purpose here of why we're predestined here. One is for us and one is for Christ. Okay, and so the first one, like Phil's already said, is for us. Why are we foreknown and predestined? And like Phil said, to become conformed to the image of his son. This is this is what our lives are to be about now as Christians, right? This is this is what we're to be at. This is a good verse. This this is a, a good verse that we need to 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 understand. Verse twenty eight. It says that. Um, and we know that God causes all things to work for the good to those who love Him. Like we talked about last week, what's the good to those? The good is is that we're going to become like Christ. That's right. That's what we need to hold on to. God is He's using all things in our lives to mold us into the image of Jesus Christ. And so what stage of the believer in his life are we at right now? We're talking about being conformed to the image of it. Yeah, we're in what stage of the believer? Mm-hmm. We're in the sanctification, sanctification stage. That's that's what we're in. We're in this. He's molding. He's molding our attitudes. He's molding our actions, our reactions, our words, our goals, our doctrines, our affections. The entirety of our life as a Christian is that He's molding us into the image of God to make us as much like His Son as possible as as He can be. And and it, what is what's secondary is where you live, where you work, who you marry, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. All of those threads are muted, but what is the brightest color upon that thread is his son. And so this, like Mike says, this is sanctification, progressive sanctification, if you will, becoming more and more like Christ. And, and as Christians, that's what we're supposed to be. If, I've, if I say I've been a Christian 10, 15 years, I should be able to look back 15 over those past 15 years, and I should be progressively looking like Christ, not progressively right. getting worse. You and see? that's going to continue on until the day of yeah, death. Death. Philippians 3.13, brethren, this is Paul, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Right. He's pressing on to that. That's what he's doing. I want to be in like Christ. I want to be like Christ. I want to, uh, uh, this is the image that I'm being uh, molded into. That word image, it, it comes from the Greek word where we get icon from. It means likeness, right? So what God's doing in our life right now is he's He's chiseling away everything that does not look like Christ. That's what he's doing. He's boom. He's cutting right here. He's cutting right here. He's cutting all these places that doesn't make us look like Christ. And we're not talking physically, by the way. We're talking spiritually, and and what do we look like? Does our mind think like Christ? And and he does that by using men, godly men, godly women in our lives, our pastors, our churches. He uses discipline. He uses the Word of God mainly to be able to conform us to the image of Christ. And here's what you do. He's building Christ's likeness in you and I. And that's what we've been predestined to be doing. That is an awesome predestination, by the way. And so the question is, as people may say, is how do you how do I know I'm chosen? How do I know that I'm the chosen one that's been predestined before that? The qu- hey, is God at work in your life? Is he making you holy and blameless? Are you putting off sins in your life? Are you reading his word? Are you praying to him daily? I'm not putting work here as salvation, but these should be the fruits of your salvation as well. Hey, am I, am I crucifying these sins here that are in my life right now? That That's what we need to be doing. Am I, yeah. am I loving God's people, his and, church? And you're always going to be doing that, like you said, because he, you know you sin, the Holy Spirit's going to bring conviction over that sin. That's handled, then what do you do? Immediately another sin pops. Up. We're never going to be perfect. I think we even had uh, Jimmy had some conversation with somebody not too long ago about that in particular. You know, when we become a believer, are we sinless? Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do remember that real well. <laughs> <laughs> remember that, remember that feel? Yeah, I mean, honestly, so, so does that make us sinless? Well, no, absolutely not. It does make us sin. Less though, that's right. Well, Be, that's yeah. Go ahead. No, that's that's a good point because people people will say this. This is some people will see this. Well, if you teach people predestination, then they're going to live like the devil. 
It's a license to sin. That, that's what you'll you'll teach. Well, if they're predestined, then they're good to go. You know what? Hey, you you just removed no. all of human responsibility. Wrong. Wrong. It is Wrong. not a free pass to sin. Read, read the Bible. Yeah. And Look, if that's another thing, how you know you that you're you're one of the elect and chosen? You're not going to have that attitude. That's you're not going to have the attitude to say, "Well, look, if that's the way the Lord sees it, then I'm just going to go. Yeah. I'm going to sin. I'm going to do my thing. God's yep. going to forgive me, and then boom, I'll be in yeah. eternity in heaven." That's not what you're going to have. Now, now, once he moves in, he don't move out, by the That's way, right. okay? And so, if, if look here. He, he, he does not put up roadblocks to your sanctification, if you will. Look here. He, he removes the obstacles, obstacles for your sanctification. He may discipline you right. And hey, in our flesh, we've talked about this, there's times where we're going to rebel, Right, that's what we do. But you know what? God's gonna take us out to the woodshed, and He's gonna beat us into discipline. Hebrews talks about that. Guess what? If I continue in that, there may be a time. We talked about this last week. He just shoop, zaps you off the earth. It's time. Let's go. Hmm. You know, untimely death. It's time to go. Why? I don't need you here anymore. You know. So that's what we're seeing here. We're gonna be sanctified. Yeah, and I would say one more thing to add to the. You know, how do you know you're chosen? And 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 this is just one personal. I mean, I've I've dealt with. In, in my own life, you're going to have a love and a desire for the Word of God. Yeah. I mean, Amen. our lives Amen. as believers stands on the authority of Scripture. And the more that we dive in, the more that we study, we're just going to hunger even more for that Word. Because each time I read, I'm learning more and more about the Creator of the universe. I'm learning more and more about Jesus Christ who saved me, about Him, because it's His story. And we're, we're reading this, and look, I'm not I'm not placing myself left and right. I'm learning more about God in the story of His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And from that, I'm desiring more. That's how I know. I look, I love Jesus more today than I did yesterday. Why? Because each day, as he's chipping away, I'm conforming more and more to his son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And he uses so many things to do that. He uses the marriage, our marriages, to do that, to conform. That is a beautiful picture mm, of, yes, he does. of how <laughs> <laughs> two sinners living together, right? He does that to church as well. And I would implore you that if you are a born-again Christian, you need to be a part of a local fellowship of a church. Absolutely. You can't do church at home by yourself. Can't mm-hmm. happen. Anyway, that's a side. But look here. As Phil was getting into this, this second this second person that we talk, this second purpose, sorry, that we were talking about here is why he predestines this is this. The he right might be the firstborn and talking about who's the he guys christ exactly might be the firstborn among many brother brethren now phil he goes against the he 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 goes to this word a lot of times because he he faces the uh this this um um well, this word yeah there's a usually a lot of times they'll come to your door and and they'll they'll debate this word that jesus was the the firstborn and guess what He's the firstborn of all creation, but that does not mean that he was the first thing created. Right. Of course, you have, there's a lot of scripture that talks about that. John 1 talks about that. Uh, in Colossians, it talks about that. But this word, I'll try to pull it up on my computer. Uh, Jimmy's not here. I hate proto proto Proto-tokos. That's good enough. That's, that's, that's good. That Let's go with good? that. A, <laughs> he is. It, look, let me read. Let me read Colossians one eighteen. It says, "He is also head of the body, the church, and is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything." Let me tell you something. Jesus was not the first person that was ever raised from the dead. Here it says. He's the firstborn from the dead. So what the word means, he is the preeminent one. He is the most important one. Out of everything ever created, Jesus Christ is the most important, uh, the preeminent one. Well, he one. is the one that the Father has given everything to. Yeah. He has He has blessed the Son with all these. We talked about firstborn is is receiving like the inheritance of a yeah. father here you know from an earthly perspective you know when a when a father has children that the firstborn would receive the inheritance mm. of the estate yeah. and when we talk about the firstborn of Christ he is going to ultimately receive the inheritance because why we talk about everything that has been created was created for him, by, by him. him, and through him. That's how we know he's the firstborn. Yeah. Absolutely. Look at let me just give you scripture here. Psalm 89, verse 27. It says this. It says, I also shall make him, pronouns, my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Now, just 
put that there in your turn back one page or just go back to verse 20. I have found David. You can circle David, if you will, my servant with my holy oil. I have anointed him. All right. And so if you do that, in fact, go back to verse three and four, if you will. Uh, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your seed forever, and I will build up your throne to all generations. David, and this is the hymn. This is this is God's Davidic covenant, if you will. We, yep. You know, in in Second Samuel chapter seven, he talks about that. There would be a descendant of David who would sit upon the throne and be king over the entire universe. And that greater son of David is none other than Jesus Christ. And so uh, Christ is the fulfillment, the fulfillment of Psalm 89. Verse 3 and 4 talks about the covenant with David. Verse 20 talks about the, David. Then if you come back to verse 27, he now calls David his firstborn. Now, David wasn't the firstborn of right. Jesse. That's the, yeah, that's the scripture I was talking about earlier. Yeah, David wasn't the firstborn of Jesse, was he? He had brothers, that's, that's not what he's talking about there. What firstborn mean is, and you guys just talked about it, is you're the highest son. You have been raised up to the place of preeminence. And so exactly right, Mike. To be firstborn means you're the, the inheritor of your father's estate. Jesus, he wasn't firstborn. That would be Cain, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, Jesus is not created. And that's a heresy that we have to put beside. Jesus was not created. He was with the Father at all times from the beginning. All three, we made man in our image. That's right. So when he says he was first born, it doesn't mean he was created. It means he has the place of unrivaled supremacy and all the throne rights belong to Christ. And so see, this is a perfect example where you're taking the entirety of Scripture to understand the concept of what Paul is saying in this particular verse. You can't look, it's very easy for us to take one one verse and create an entire doctrine off of it yep. and not look at the rest of scripture. And we've seen that many people have done that throughout history. And so we look at it, we look at this example from the very beginning, right? Cain would have been the firstborn. We know that Christ wasn't the firstborn among the dead. You know, but we know that Christ existed from the very beginning of time. And so we have to understand what was Paul trying to say when he meant firstborn and look at the context yeah. of everywhere else this is used throughout scripture and that's where we're going to get the true meaning of the word absolutely Al analogy of scripture that was just that's what the the reformers would use an of scripture is how they or scriptura uh the 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 uh, the latin word there but yeah we we take scripture we look at it we look at it from an entirety and uh we we come up with definitions like that so uh so the purpose that we're talking about of predestination is twofold. One, like we just said, so that we become made like his son into the image of Christ, right? And two is, is that his son, this is beautiful, this is just great when I read this, is that his son would have many brethren that would recognize his preeminent throughout all the ages to come so that we would worship him and adore him for his preeminence. That is beautiful. What a picture that God paints here so that we're made into the image, but yet now the firstborn, Though the one that has the inheritance, we get to share in that, right? We're the brethren of him. And so look here, nothing makes the father happier. Nothing pleases the father more than making much of his son, than glorifying his son, pointing to his son. And that's what we're to do. He's making us into the image of his son. And that's what we see here in the scripture. That's what we've been mm -hmm. predestined for. Want to, hey, look here, Mike, want to make... Your your daughter the other night, man, dude, she was awesome at volleyball. <laughs> by the way, awesome yeah, at volleyball. We kind of felt bad. Yeah. How old is your little girl? She is um, five. Look, she's five years old. You know, we're we're all out there. We we're we're playing volleyball. We're competitive, and so Mike, you know, he lets his little girl come home. I'm like, well, she's gonna be in the way. Or we'll, <laughs> we're gonna run over. Hey, I it, thought the same thing. <laughs> and it turned out she was the best player on the team. <laughs> Yeah, she did because one came flying at her and she just put those arms yeah. out there and hit that sucker up and we were all like, what, what yeah. in the world does that I know. So, so uh, yeah, exactly. So I make that point to think about it. When I tell you something good about your daughter, does that not make you beam with joy? Oh, sure it does. It, absolutely. It yeah. would have the other night if my, my daughter did. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. mine. You know? but, but even and Phil's daughter's it, over it, here hitting yeah. the net when she's <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and she plays for Covenant High School, you know, so I mean, when, just, starting line of Grayson Ramsey. <laughs> No, uh, 
but uh, but w- the point there was was that yeah, you see it, but when other people see it and they point to your daughter, you you beam with glory. My point is is that when we do that to fo- to to Christ's son or <laughs> to God's son. Jesus, it's exponentially with the Father. The Father loves the Son that much. You see, it causes the Father's heart to soar when the Son is worshipped. He delights in His Son and as having all the glory. And what did He do? And we, he give Him what? Not just all the glory, but He give Him the authority as well. He's going to be the one to hand down the judgment as well. Correct? Mm-hmm. And so He says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. The Son has that. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And so that's why the son is seated there, and he's given him all the authority. And that's why he's the object of our saving faith and all things working out to make us like not the Father or the Spirit, but the Son. We're to be like Christ, that he'd be the firstborn among many brethren. So there's a whole family of brethren now who have been predestined to believe, called, and justified, and we sing the praises of Christ. There are, and I know that Jesus himself knows who those are who those are, who his brothers are. When we see Jesus, um, you know, in John chapter 6, he says, whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And yet he also said to the crowds this very specific thing, John six thirty six: you have seen me, and you do not believe. Well, why didn't they believe? He says in 37, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. So Jesus saying there, listen, these are hard-hearted people that Jesus said to them that the Father gave to Christ some to be saved and not others. And Christ knew who they were. He yeah. knew who they were. Absolutely. He knows his sheep. That's right. And his sheep know his voice. And his voice. sheep hear his voice and they yeah. know his voice. Yeah. And we're going to, well, I mean, I don't know how much time we have left, but about uh, nine minutes. Not, well, we can't get into this. Then, <laughs> so I was going <laughs> to say, but, you know, real quickly then, let's just uh, let's just talk about what we're going to be talking about next week. Real, you know, we, we thought we were going to get into this, but it's interesting you say that scripture that's in John 10. And and that's really uh, the next thing that we see in chapter th- in verse 30 is, is uh, I'll just read it. And these whom he predestined. So we've gone over that. And these whom people, right, this, this set of people whom God has predetermined, has set the horizon out, right, set the journey, says he also, he, the Father, has also called, and those whom he called, he also justified. I'm just going to stop right there because we'll be talking about calling our whole next thing, those whom he called. And so what we see today is, or, or what we're going to see next time is, we're going to kind of understand this word of calling, and, and it's going to be the third link in God's chain of salvation, or the golden chain of salvation, this word called. And I think we're going to do a, we're going to try to do a complete word study on that. We'll end up going through the New Testament, I believe, and we're going to spend time. There's there's two types of callings. We'll just tease it with this, right? There's two types of callings that we see in theology. And there's one that is a an external call, if you will, and then there's an internal call. And I want to tease that a little bit, but I think that's what we'll talk about next time more in depth. But but what we'll really, what let me just say this, what this calling he's talking about in this scripture is the effectual call, the internal call, as you will. Those that are called, those who've been foreordained, those who have been foreknown, predetermined, and, and God's calling upon their lives. And this is where this is where the eternal uh, counsel of God meets mankind. You see how that comes? It all comes into play at this point where, where that, um, that choosing in the past comes to fruition in the present, if yeah. you will. Yeah, in time. We're called in time. And how do we call, by the way? How does, how does God do that? He yeah. does it by the gospel. The gospel. And so what was decided before time began, now in time, he calls by the God. We've probably read this before, but I just love this verse. I'll read it again. But we always give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this, okay, to this, he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain, now may obtain, may is not the word may in the Greek. This is a done deal. Obtain the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the epistles, when you see calling, it always ends in salvation every time. Every time it does that. And you said it called through what? The gospel. Yeah. Called through the gospel that they delivered. Absolutely. Well, look who. Well, this is why it can't be. It has to be effective. 
because look at who the author is of this, right? If you look at just this scripture here is, and these whom he predestined, he called. Who's the author of the call? We, we see three things here, by the way. The author of the call is God the Father. That's right. All right. The second thing is, is who's the recipient? Who is God calling? Well, he isn't calling everyone effectually. That's not what he does. He doesn't call everyone effectually. If he does, then everyone would be saved. That would be universalism. We don't believe that. He's only calling those that whom he predestined. And so the third one is is the nature of his call. The, The word call means to utter a loud voice, to summon someone from a place to another. That's that's what calling means. So to summon someone to come to you or to come to another person, if I was to summon Mike, Mike, I need you to come to me, that would be a calling. And the, But this reference is to the sovereign effectual call by which God summons sinners to his son. And this is where the eternal will of God in eternity past becomes real within time. Where God's salvation he has determined in the past invades the time and connects with our human hearts. It's applied to the individual's lives. And so that's just where theologians, we have to make careful distinctions. And this is what we'll do next week. And I'm just going to, this is, and I'll just lay it out there is, is we have to make careful distinctions in the calling that we're going to be talking about. And like I've said, there's, there's the external call, which I will just preface is, is the gospel call to all people Yeah, is the call that goes out from evangelists, from pulpits, from Bible studies, from this radio program. We're going to give a call here in just a few minutes of this external call, but then there's an internal call in which God does himself. It's all a work of God. Yeah, the external call is is words. The internal call is no words. That's good. It's 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 a heart and it's as we get into it, you're not going to like this. But it, but you'll see there there's a drawing and you can translate that word as dragging. Drag. Well, I don't want to get dragged. Well, when he, when he calls you, that's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's man. the best dragging you'll ever have, by the way. Yeah. It, and, and I heard one guy say, said, well, I tell you what hell would be like if, if he drug me to heaven and I didn't want to be there. You tell me one person that's in heaven that don't want to be there. That's Amen. right. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Don't, don't, don't use that. So... Here's the deal. We're going to use scripture. Well, you talked about an external call. You know why it's got to be external? Because faith comes by hearing. hearing. There has to be a proclamation. There has to be words. And then there's an internal call. And what we'll do is we'll lay out scripture on, on, on every bit of it, just like we've done with the words so far. And I tell you what, this calling is humongous. I've got 25 or 30 scriptures right here that I'm looking at that really just prove the point of what what God does, how he calls, how he draws, and those that are drawn, I guess what, they're going to be raised up on the last day. All right, so I just wanted to say this before we uh, close this thing out. We just got a few minutes left, and uh, for those that are listening, I just want you to know that we and uh, we enjoy hearing from you. We enjoy hearing mm-hmm. that you're listening and leaving us comments and letting us know what you think about the show. Um, we just recently had some folks reach out and uh, listen to last week's show, gave us some encouraging word, yeah. and we really do appreciate that. So if you have any questions about um, things that we're talking about, maybe you want to go a little bit more in depth. Um, Blake mentioned earlier in the show, you can go to our Facebook page, and you can always reach out, ask us those questions. Go to our YouTube page uh, as well, and and you can leave comments there. We'd be happy to have those discussions with you. Um, but LifesongRadio.com, go check it out. See what Jimmy's done to the page. And also wanted to give a shout-out to Tom Heyman. We've got his book that's been sitting up here. Um, Blake, you want to tell us about it? Yeah, so Tom uh, Hammond, 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 yeah, Hammond. Hammond. I don't, yeah, yeah. I it's, always it's Hammond. Hammond. I don't, I know, I don't know why you do Hammond, no, but it, yeah, you're you talk like I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just it's Hammond. <laughs> Tom's a good friend of us. We had uh, had him on our uh, podcast the other day or our, our radio show for G three when we were there at G three. And Tom is the author. We've we've gone through that. The author of What Time Is Purple. And what's amazing is this is a free resource, uh, free to us, not free to someone because someone did have to pay for this right, right to get it. But it is offering this for free that you can get it's a great gospel uh 
tract, if you will. We use it, but yet it's an apologetic for um, for the atheist. Uh, if you have an atheist in your life, this is who you. This is what you want to give. This is a great uh, book that goes through just some some logical things, you know, to think through. But then it also at the end it gives the gospel call. And so Tom is a really good friend of ours who lives in Hall, Tennessee, and uh, hopefully we we'll get to see him in a couple of weeks. And we'd love to. I think we're going to be able to do some ministry opportunities as well with him. But if you go to Wretched Radio, we listen to Wretched Radio a lot with Todd Friel, and you can go to there, I think, or maybe go to whattimeispurple.com, and you can get your free resources for this, and then start handing them out. It's easy. This just is, gotta pay for shipping. Uh, yep, yeah, just pay for shipping, which isn't but a couple of bucks and all. I mean, if you were to go and you were to get Todd Friel and them, what, uh, don't stub your toe, and you were to pay for 20 of those, man, it's like 50 bucks. So, this is an amazing track. It's hard uh, on the outside. It's beautiful. You can lay it somewhere in a doctor's office, hand it to someone. Many people have been have been changed by this. And, and hey, this is the external call in here. We give it to them. You, they hear the gospel. They read the gospel. And That's then good. God draws them, you know, as he as he chooses. And so, uh, but but we love Tom. He's a good friend of ours. And so, just get your copy of What Time Is Purple. Uh, you can go to Wretched Radio or WhatTimeIsPurple dot com. So, uh, can I quote? Can I quote Jesus? We won't pray. But <laughs> what? What? You know, the kingdom. I'll just say what he said. I'm gonna get might get a, wrong, a word wrong. <laughs> Excuse me, brother. But what must I do to be saved? Well, Jesus says the kingdom's the kingdom is at hand. Yeah. Repent and believe the gospel. If you go to hell, you went there because you re- rejected Christ. That's that's on us. Yeah. And that's why you got God. God did not send you there. You chose to go there. Yeah. That's yeah, a fact. Absolutely. If you got any more questions about that, about the gospel call, if you have any other questions, you can contact us at lifesongradio.com. You can go there and check us out on our email address. We have also resources as well. Uh, just get contact us. We would love to walk you through that as well. But hey, folks, we, uh, we're out of time. We'll see you next week on Lifesong Radio. <laughs>